The world is currently in chaos, but there's something we can always rely on. Arguing with our dumb friends about Marvel movies. I'm not dumb. I wasn't I, talking about you. I like not your friend. I like DC. <laughs> <I'm> smart. <laughs> Today we're discussing which movies in the almost 25 film franchise are the best and which Mickey Rourke did. What does that mean? What, is yeah, what does that mean? Day? You mean get an Oscar late in life? Yeah. Welcome to Film House. Phoenix Rising. <laughs> Who? Uh, that beautiful man or woman, Mickey Rourke? I can't tell sometimes. <laughs> he couldn't help it. He was a boxer. Uh, no, it's fine. It's just like when he wears like juicy pants. <laughs> like, he can't help it. He's a boxer. <laughs> This week's, <laughs> this week's episode of Filmhouse is made possible by our sponsor, Shudder, the premium streaming video service super serving members with the best selection in genre entertainment covering horror, thrillers, and the supernatural. And Mac Weldon, the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants, and more that you will ever wear. We'll hear more from them later in the show. Today's episode is a pretty light, fun one. Uh, it's not topical in the news, but I thought it would be f- just a fun time and a fun mm-hmm. watch. I'm joined today by Ryan, hey. Adam, hey. film fans, and James, Hi. Uh, a.k.a. Mickey Rourke's number one fan. I would say or, that. Number two. I, would you I, compete for the spot? Top three. I've, top said, three I've said it before. One of my greatest regrets is not buying that signed copy of I The know. Wrestler to someone else by Mickey Rourke that I found in Amoeba Music that one time. <laughs> that would have been cool for them. I was like, oh, what do I need a signed Wait a minute. I should have exactly bought a him <laughs> having signed it for Rick or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so if you're someone right now that is practicing social distancing, uh, you've got a lot of free time on your hands. So why not go back and rewatch all the Marvel movies? Oh, I thought we were doing Mickey Rourke movies. I was <laughs> no, like, no, 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 Barfly, no. nine and a half <laughs> weeks. Pope, Pope of Greenwich Village. And uh, that's all of them. No, uh, <laughs> Harley Davidson and the Marvel Man. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has very strong opinions on both Mickey Rourke and Marvel movies, as we've clearly established. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I, I, not to not to cut you off there, but I think that only lame people have strong opinions on the Marvel. I think <laughs> across on. the what? across the I'm board. Cool. No, I'm, I'm cool. talking generally. I opinions. I'm talking I'm, generally. We're all pretty lame, mm-hmm. uh, and we think about things too much. Fair enough. I would say most people like them all. Most people think mm-hmm. they're great and I, will, and go, oh, cool, new Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. I think most people actually have a strong opinion, in the, or at least ones that they really like or really don't like, like mm-hmm. we're about to talk about. But. I think the people maybe we talk to about it, I think mm-hmm. most people do not care, as evidenced by most of the box offices of all of these yeah. movies, <laughs> including Venom. Oh, when I talk to people friends. people thought were a Marvel movie. That are outside the, the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, oh, oh, I'm going at... 12.01 a.m. to go see uh, Ant-Man 3, and they're like, mm-hmm. oh, I didn't even know that was coming out. Yeah, right maybe out. I'll see it. Yeah. Probably wait. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm I'm the guy who's driving by those people online and going, you already saw Ant-Man. It was called Iron Man. And then I peel out, and I run into a telephone pole. <laughs> nice. And then I vomit in yeah, my seat. And he goes, Snape kill Voldemort. Oh, Snape kill Voldemort. Yeah, I'm, I'm that cool guy. And where then I everyone go. else goes, it's Dumbledore. Yeah. yeah. Huh? He goes, your brand of uh, things that you like doesn't match up with my brand of things that I like. <laughs> well, we I'll, should argue more. I'll say this. A lot of us did align pretty close in yes. what we considered to be our top five best, top five oh. worst, except for one oh. one rebel heart. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ryan's weird. I'm like Deadpool, man. I don't play by the rules. Which uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to. I figured we'd talk about the best first, yeah. you know, uh, save, save the worst. I noticed it's top five, and I'm already seeing a six under Ryan's best. I don't play by the rules, man. I'm like Deadpool. Wow. Man, can, can we go Deadpool back in time is. to 2015 or whatever it was when first Deadpool came out, and everyone on social media is like, I'm like Deadpool, too. <laughs> I break the rules. <laughs> I'm snarky, and I talk That's to the me. camera. <laughs> God. Uh, did any of you have a tough choice? With this, like, did any of you have to kill your darlings, sort of thing? Uh, I, I did. I, I I really wanted to put Infinity War on my top six, but uh, uh, I was like, you know, Iron Man three was so hilarious, okay. and I, it couldn't right. get up there. I wow. love I, part of it. A lot of these. So I wasn't necessarily looking at other people's uh-huh. when it was going in, but because we were all adding to the same doc, and there were some parts where I would like glance over at someone's Ryan's and go, ha! And then, <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to hear your reasoning, which will be wrong. All right, well, let's start with okay. with James, Adam, and I, because ours are all fairly, I think, close. Okay. Like, yeah. we, we circle sort of in the mm. same well, yeah. and then we'll mix up with Ryan's, <laughs> yeah. because and yeah, yeah. there are a couple curveballs. I think, I think also mine isn't exactly the top five. It's, like, the top two, where 
so a lot of those movies just sort of morph into one. Yeah, yeah. And then it builds up to one or two other movies. Yeah. yeah. And I was, yeah. It's, I've, we've said this so many times and people are probably very tired of hearing it. But it's not a bad thing. I'm Also, when I say things are best or worse or whatever, it's, I'm not being like, I hate it. But a lot of these movies are like watching television. It's like watching a, a really expensive episode of Game of Thrones, you know, but it's like it's on that level. I hated Iron Man 2. I can say that. Continue. Okay. Sorry. All right. That's, that's not, fine. That's not brave. <laughs> it's just a fact, Jack. <laughs> all right. I think Iron Man 2 gets better the more you watch it. Now that you have all these other movies Again, to back it up. You know, we, can, we can just jump right into it. But Iron Man 2 would be better if they just called it Avengers uh Prequel. Point five. Or, yeah. yeah. Right. Zero. Avengers they called zero. it almost Avengers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Road to Avengerism. Yeah. Well, I'll start with my with what was my fifth entry on my list, right. which was Captain America Civil War. Boo, you're, okay. I hate you. Why can't that be number one? Wrong. Adam had it as his oh. third entry, and oh, yeah. James mm-hmm. had it as his second entry. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, I didn't place this higher just because I felt like there was some that superseded it. But I do think uh, it's in terms of the uh, – the uh, sort of team, big team up movies. It's one of the best ones. Right. I want to hear why Ryan didn't put it on his list yeah, at Ryan, all. Yeah, Ryan, you didn't include it at all. <laughs> all right. So when I'm looking at my favorite Marvel movies, you'll see a theme in mine. I like the funny ones. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like the. Mar- I, I'm not a. I, I don't really care about Marvel movies, but if I go, I want to. I want to laugh. Uh, all of mine are funny. Hold on. Wait. Doesn't Civil War have Gary Shandling in it? Maybe <laughs> rest in peace. Civil War. They, I like Civil War, but they mm-hmm. go out of their way to make you know this '70s kind of political thriller, you know, yeah. kind of mm-hmm. movie. The Russo Brothers is really well made, mm-hmm. but it's just, there's, you know, it's it's more serious than the others. And I do think that the end is pretty awesome, uh, the the last fight and stuff. Not top five awesome. Yeah. Actually, no, I was thinking of Winter Soldier when I was talking yeah, about that's Yeah, that's what I, no, I thought. Fine. Like, I think yeah. You can keep going. But, but still, uh, 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 the, you know, this is kind of, just snowballing off of Winter Soldiers. It was pretty similar, but uh, I didn't laugh. <laughs> so, I didn't laugh. That's the main thing. Okay. So that was my thing because I know I, I loved Winter Soldier too, but for me, the it did seem like uh, internal, everything's, oh, everyone's fighting on the inside. Hydro is all bad. Like they were there all along and stuff. And I was like, <sighs> some of that stuff is tiring the more I watch it again and again. When mm-hmm. you... My big thing, my big criticism of most Marvel movies is that their strategy is take a hero, control C, control V, invert colors, that's your bad guy. (laughs) And so, like, uh, that's one of the things I love about Civil War is it's not that at Mm -hmm. all. Like, yeah. It's friends fighting yeah. friends. It's well, well, it's friends fighting friends, but visually too, just from a pure visual standpoint, it's it's Black Panther, Captain America, Mm -hmm. uh, Falcon. Uh, Iron Man, all of these very different appearing characters. So on screen, it it feels very, very different, you know. And yeah. also, of course, the fight scene at the airport is like, holy shit. Like, that's yeah. when you realize yeah. the potential of what we've been waiting for mm-hmm. of all of these movies. You're like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. For me also, I came off a really disappointing uh, Ant-Man because I thought that I, Paul, Ant-Man's on one of my worst movie lists. I like lists. Ant-Man. <laughs> Um, I didn't think Ant-Man was funny. I thought Paul Rudd was underutilized in now, his comedic you prowess. Don't, you don't get humor or comedy out of big things uh, becoming small and small yeah. things becoming big. It's always funny. It never gets old. Continue. <laughs> well, I was going well, to just ask. Ryan's kind of a movie buff, so I don't know if he has the Edgar Wright script in his head, and he's seen a different version of Ant-Man. Yeah. Yep. And he's like, I love it. It looks like Baby Driver, and it doesn't look like it was shot in a weekend. It doesn't look free. like Bring It On. <laughs> I, I felt like the limited time that you actually uh, see and interact with Ant-Man in Civil War, they did him more justice to have, having Paul mm. Rudd having fun mm-hmm. and the character doing fun stuff than, than mm. Ant-Man the movie. But that's just I, me. I can see that. I, I will say, if you were going to ask me, like, top five best scenes of any Marvel movie, I would put so the Civil War fight scene what is one of the most memorable, for sure, because mm-hmm. of what you're saying. But overall, it took a while to get there. I didn't mm. laugh. I, I, right, that's fair. Okay. I, I mean, I'm okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. I'm yeah. fine with your criticism. That's or whatever. fine. Thank you. You did well. <laughs> that's fun. No, it's Fairly it's, Brothers, though. Yeah. I, remember, <laughs> 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 I, I do like, too, that the – so – if I were to ask you, Ryan, what's a better movie, Age of Ultron or Civil War? Oh, Civil War. Age of Ultron sucks. That's on my top bottom five. Yeah, but there's no Civil War without Age of Ultron. Think about it. Uh, Which I, one's the funnier? chronology is – this is just – time is a flat circle right. in the MCU. Well, I mean, it, them as individuals. I'm just saying it's actually if you – because of the, the way these things play out, 
if you actually were to cut Age of Ultron and Civil War into one movie, it'd be pretty good. It's got some fallout in there of like, hey, you guys screwed up Sokovia. You let that robot like almost blow up the planet with the meteor. I don't know what his plan was. but That is true. There is cool yeah. stuff in Age of Ultron. Like the, the Ultron actually, him becoming Ultron is pretty cool. Oh, James he, Spader. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to defend Age of Ultron. I'm just saying much like to Lisa's argument of Ant-Man of like, Ant-Man sucks, but man, he's great in Civil War. It's like, Age, Age yeah. of Ultron sucks, but man, that plot point in Civil War is pretty cool. Yeah. How it's in a dark timeline now because, like, well, because all the stuff that preceded. True. Anyway, just thought, just want to blow your mind. Yeah, yeah, that blew my mind. That yeah. is an interesting thing about this. When you get to the point of having 25 movies, yeah. is that you can have a character that's worse in their own movie than they are in other movies. For I, sure. I think it's definitely a testament to, while it's cool they have a movie, and yeah. it's great that it made a billion dollars. Maybe it wasn't necessary. <laughs> like maybe it wasn't necessary. I mean, that's how I feel a lot about my worst. I think my worst list is a lot of these characters that I actually genuinely enjoy, mm -hmm. but that I don't think are good in their own movie. I think mm -hmm. their, their own movie is the worst yeah. showcase of them. Or it took mm -hmm. them a couple movies to get to a good uh, solo film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. And uh, another thing for me with Civil War is that it. it always feels to me like more of an Avengers movie than a Captain America movie. Mm -hmm. Like I think mm -hmm. all, probably a lot of people would agree with that because yeah. it's so focused on the ensemble. And when I go back and I try to watch the first Avengers movie or Age of Ultron, I get really, really bored. This is the only one that I can rewatch without getting bored. Really? The only yeah. Marvel movie period? The only think? event, the only like one that I ensemble. consider like an Avengers, I mean, excluding Infinity War and Endgame. But mm -hmm. like it's the only one that of those three that I sort of go back and I'm like, oh, I can, can watch this whole thing and not mm -hmm. be like, I don't care about this. And this feels <laughs> really slow for the first 30 minutes. Do you guys remember the marketing campaign for like Civil War? Yeah. And it was like, pick, pick your side. Which side? And people yeah, are wasn't posting on Twitter. Joel Rubin like Scarlet Witch. Where, and then. <laughs> well, that was our poster. <laughs> but yes. But like the you could tweet out like, which team are you? Team Iron Man or Team Captain America? Mm -hmm. And I was like. I mean, I'm the good guys, <laughs> Captain America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there are so many people that are like, Team Iron Man, yeah. you should sell out your privacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, the government <laughs> should own all of your rights. <laughs> well, this was a weird one because I remember the marketing campaign. Because I think you always forget, it is a Captain America movie. It's Captain America 3, the third one, where you go, oh, I forget about that because it's an ensemble movie. Mm -hmm. I remember the marketing campaign being a trailer on Twitter and like, Here's our movie, I guess. Everyone's like, holy shit! Mm -hmm. there's, there's a Black Panther and a Spider-Man in that movie. And they're like, yeah, I guess. You know, it's pretty cool. I hope you guys go see a billion dollars. Yeah, <laughs> like, geez. Awesome. No, it was great. And it's like, I, yeah, it is a better Avengers movie than the two Avenger movies before it, which yeah. is crazy because it has a darker tone because I think Joss Whedon or Marvel and team, they're like, well, when it's Avengers, the Avengers get together. You know, Thor's there. Everyone's happy. We're having a good time. And they're like, well, if we do Civil War, it's going to be sad. It, it didn't make my top five, but I do think Avengers, the first Avengers, the second half of that movie is yeah. really great. It was a feat, I, too. I have it as, on my top five. Me it too, looks buddy. Like everyone, I mean, it appears as though Elise and I are the only ones who don't have it. You two both do have it on your top five. Yeah. But I think it's close. The only problem is I think it's this situation. The Russo brothers got to make... They got to make a couple movie. They got to make a movie, and then they got to make a practice Avengers, and mm. then they got to make two full blown Avengers. Yeah. Joss Whedon jumped. His first step into the Marvel universe was with this Avengers thing, and I think wrapping your head around all of that, you're watching. For me, you're watching that happen in the first half of the movie, and mm -hmm. it isn't until you get to the second half that you're like, "Oh, this well, is the payoff me. of this." I I disagree. I thought the Avengers was like. The perfect Avengers movie we got. You liked but, the beginning where I, Nick Fury is driving yeah. and and Hawkeye is bad guy. I mean, it it, it, it takes it, some setup, Coulson you know. Is killed well, yeah, because yeah, Ryan, stuff. you had it as your no. number five of six, and yes. Adam, you put it as your number five. Yeah, I, I think because I think it people don't. I still have like nostalgia for it, which has weird as that sounds because it's I guess ten years old now, but it's set like James is saying. I think it it's an important building block. To this insane ecosystem that they've created, this this machine that cannot be stopped, and, I, and it's I, funny. Oh, I, I'm, yeah. It's it again. I'm not saying it's bad. Mm. I wouldn't have it anywhere close to my bad list. It's definitely on the in the top top of the list. Yeah. But and maybe this is more of a testament to how bad Iron Man Two is, where 
Iron Man 2 is completely devoted to getting people ready for Avengers. Mm -hmm. But when you sit down for Avengers, they're still like, oh, hold on. We need to get you ready for this. And I'm like, right. well, then what the fuck was Iron Man 2 <laughs> supposed to what do? What the fuck was Iron Man 2? I had that same question. Um, it, was, but yeah. it was time time killer. Sorry. No, but I'm, I'm with you, Ryan. Like, I think if you – Avengers is actually one of those movies where if I catch it from the beginning, I'm like, I might just sit and watch this whole mm -hmm. thing because it yeah, just keeps good. moving. It moves really well. It moves like a Joss if Whedon television Joss Whedon show. is a great filmmaker. <laughs> I only feel that way if I catch it after the first, like, 45 minutes. I, I think like, if I catch it around the time they're fighting in the woods or maybe even just a little bit after that, then I'll watch all the oh, way through to the end. But if Avengers comes on TV and it's Nick Fury driving away from the collapsing bunker, I'm gone. That, that's I, a, a I big don't exciting know moment. I don't, but I don't it, care about any But there's like, it's like, it's got everything. It's like, S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. Like, oh my God, we're seeing more of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. Nick Fury is looking and saying, it's the Tesseract. What Loki's back. Oh, my God. It's like, and now Hawkeye's part of his team. Who? All he's kidnapping stuff, them all. It's all building up to this moment. Like, it kicks you in the nuts right away. All of this stuff became what I think is important about them after Avengers, in my opinion. How dare Nick you. Fury, Hawkeye, Loki, all of these characters, I think, endeared themselves to the audience. Mm-hmm. After Avengers, well, sure. or through Avengers. Well, you didn't know what Hawkeye was. He was a guy who hung exactly. out. Exactly. He was like he's on a, a guy, ladder. Or something. He's a guy who was like in the shadows shooting at yeah, Thor. He's like one and step away from bum fights. Yeah, and Loki <laughs> was just the kind of lame <laughs> villain from Thor, which was also not a great movie. And mm. so, mm. like, that's what was like the building um, blocks mm -hmm. yeah. of Avengers. So oh. that's why I don't care about the first half of that yeah. movie. Another movie that did the ensemble thing, but it did it in a different way than Avengers, where it, it just presented the entire ensemble to us with its debut movie. The three uh, three of us had this on our list. Uh, me at number four, James at number three, and Ryan at number two was Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, baby. The baby. first mm -hmm. one. Oh, baby. Um, James Gunn killed it. Which... I Who do you kill? did not expect it, that I would no. be so into Holy cow. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I think the way that Who he used have? music as a, you know, he copied Baby Driver. <laughs> he said, I'm going to build the whole thing <laughs> around enough. around music. Okay. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but um, but the way that, like, he used Star-Lord's uh, time and, and his him being stuck personally influenced by the time period he lived in to influence mm -hmm. the world of was Guardians like, was so, oh, so cool. I was going to say, to the time period James Gunn is stuck in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, I think it's one of the funnier Absolutely. Um, of the Marvel movies. It gets, it gets the comedy right and it doesn't fall flat. Like Drax is one of the funniest characters. Mm -hmm. Rocket's a great character. Like They it, also have a huge uh, impact on the later Avenger movies. Yeah. Like them being part of that is exciting because it, it, they, they just did a really smart – Building block. I, I wanted to add it to my list. I don't. I think I kind of see both movies as one in a weird way. If that makes sense. Volume one and two. Yeah, they kind of know. just like they just mm. feel like um, very similar because volume they're just happening in their own world. They're not e touching the the yeah. rest of anything. Volume two else. is on my worst list. We'll talk about that. Really. In a Continue. Interesting thought. I only um, saw it once. Oh. I, no, I'm curious why you hate it. For me, Guardians of the Galaxy is so amazing yes. because as a comic book kid growing up. When you got into cosmic stuff, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> like, no, thank you. What I know if, there's some great stories What about in there. that was a deterrent to you? MODOK. Just, it was or just like we, the idea of space is all space. Did you just stuff. find it was more compelling to see how things played out on Earth? I think so. It just felt Earth felt more alive in a lot of ways. Relatable. Where space always felt vast and mm -hmm. empty. And that's not to criticize any of the stories. It's just my kind of perception of it. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying about the time period that James Gunn is stuck in this is one of those movies that it's happened several times over the course of 25 films where I'm like, I think I'm done with these. I think I'm done. And then and then a movie will come out and be like, I'm back in. Yeah. And it'll rev me back up. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy completely pulled me back in and made the cosmic aspect of the Marvel Universe the most interesting for me because he turned it into like the 80s. <laughs> like, yeah. like space is the 80s, <laughs> yeah. and space is this music, and space is this sound, and it was so different from well, the, which I actually kind of like. 70s, like, too. The, the uh, <laughs> very uh, desaturated real world, the Captain America, Iron Man world that we were kind of going into. And I was like, holy shit, this is great. And he set the tone for some of my favorite like aspects of the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward, which is this high saturation, mm -hmm. this like crazy wild characters. And I yeah, I was blown away because when they said they were doing Guardians of the Galaxy, I went, Are you 
the one with the tree mm-hmm. and the <laughs> raccoon. You're doing that. Yeah. Um, and that was and, that was but, every blog post for yeah. about that for about six months. Like it's a tree and a raccoon. Well, if I well, I guess Marvel can't do it all. Yeah. Oh well, and it was like it ended up being one of the best movies. So. And it was also it was also James Gunn, and I was like the guy that made me watch Ellen Page and Rain Wilson have sex. <laughs> well, uh, one of them was having Ryan, sex. Ryan, do you kind of feel the same well, as James? Were, but, I, your passion for it. <laughs> to me, this was like such a uh, um, achievement because it's like. Um, it, it really embraced the absurdity of these movies uh, like like no other movies did. You know, all these movies are insane when you think about the nuts and bolts of what you're watching. But then this movie just embraced that. It was like, all right, we're going to throw this talking raccoon in this tree mm. and really embrace kind of the, I don't want to call it meta, but just kind of like this is insane and we're going to treat it as such. But uh, uh, And it was re- genuinely funny and the soundtrack was awesome. Like, now, you like funny Marvel movies, I've heard. Yeah, yeah okay. that's my, my well, main criteria because I don't care either. About these movies, but I but when I see them, I like like it, it like like you were saying like I, every time I say a new movie comes out, I'm like I don't give a shit about this new Marvel movie. But then somehow they pull mm-hmm. me back in. Yeah. What and are you I gonna say? At tell it? you, oh, oh. It was, that was at least talking. Oh, I'm sorry. At least <laughs> we look a lot alike. <laughs> I was gonna say like it, it, the humor aspect for me because there are a lot of Marvel movies that I'll see in the theater, and in that theater experience, you know, you're in a packed theater, everyone's laughing around you, you laugh too. You, it, it's a it's a hive thing, but then like when I watch them at home again, I'm like, oh, a lot of this humor isn't landing for me. Yeah. But Guardians it, uh, does is the exception where I'm like, Absolutely. oh yeah, this is all they nail. He nails the humor mm-hmm. and all the characters. It's not yeah. like you know them as much as no. uh, Captain America or anything. They're all pretty new, and he did such a good job of introducing he, them to everybody. He did because it took to, for the ensemble of Avengers it took all those other movies, but for Guardians, yeah. he's like, no, there's just this ragtag right. crew. It's it's a weird thing too because it. On one hand, almost nothing was at stake with it being involved with the MCU, but it also had the task of introducing Thanos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A bit, oh, yeah. Well, not, I That's mean, true. beyond a post credit scene, it's, you know, man sitting in chair. No, but and, it's the connective tissue. But it, it's the yeah. sort of thing that I think that's what Edgar Wright was quitting over, where he's like, listen, you can do most of that Ant-Man movie, but at some point you need to mention Captain America. He goes, nope, I'm out. And they're like, Cap- Captain America, can we finish the sentence? He's like, no, I'm out of here. I'm British. <laughs> and then he had his tea and he left. And then, but James Gunn was probably like, yeah, I'll put in Thanos, whatever. We'll figure it out. I'm not going to fight you. I'll uh, I'll make it work. Well, I'm an easygoing guy. Just it, don't read my tweets. Yeah. It's just, it's a little, it's it's also the first time where they're like, Infinity Stone. Like, they like straight up say Infinity Stone. Yeah. The only, I think the only shortcoming of Guardians of the Galaxy is that Ronin gets like, Ronin oh, yeah. is a pretty sick villain, uh-huh. but not. In that movie, uh, wait, wait, so much. Well, I mean, he's kind of a joke in the movie. He, uh, he's in, not, in he's not a great though. bad guy. Which, um, which Ronin are you talking about? Hawkeye Ronin or Lee Pace Ronin? Lee Pace Ronin. Mm, I'm <laughs> confused. I only know one Ronin. And I thought that Ronin would get a reprieve in Captain Marvel. That didn't happen. And then they shit on him again. Yeah. yeah. But like, but and it sucks because he is kind of he's pretty cool. And it sucks that they he isn't. But mm. I know that it's because you're, this Thanos is looming. Kind of thing is the only thing that I would strike against Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Also, the first trailer that came out for it is not funny. I mean, they're like, and that's no. the they're, hiding, they're hiding it. Yeah. You know? But it's weird. They cut it like it's funny. And they ruin they don't ruin the jokes for the final movie, but the trail the or first trailer that came out, I watched and I was like, oh no. <laughs> like, unless they're unless this editor doesn't know what humor is. Yeah. This movie is going to be terrible. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah. He didn't. He, the editor just doesn't know what comedic timing is. It was yeah. strange. Another movie that brought us into the cosmos uh, was Thor Ragnarok. I had it as number one on my list. Adam had it as number four. James is also number one. Yeah. Ryan did not acknowledge yeah, it. Yeah, which is weird <laughs> considering how much you value comedy. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that is true. I, I did appreciate this movie. Uh, it, it, there's funny shit in it. I will say I fell asleep. Oh. Which I think it does factor into this. <laughs> okay. um, Did you watch it at two a.m.? Have you watched it I was since? Tired. Try, yeah. Attempted you... to rewatch it because no. I, I consider it the funniest oh, yeah, Marvel it, movie. In my okay. opinion, it is the most. No, right. There's funny stuff in it. I know this is my fault. I just fell. No, sick. no, that's fine. Uh, it, if you haven't honest. seen the movie, yeah, at least. You and know, it, don't... it does a thing where it gives us unconventional character mashups. Like if you had told me ten years ago, I'd want I'd, my favorite Marvel movie would be one pairing Hulk and Thor. I'd be like, what are you well, talking about? At least if you've ever read World War Hulk, you haven't... would have known that Beta Ray Bill uh, shows up at one point. So the the, cha- <laughs> the chances of it happening were very. Sli- <laughs> I guess it's gonna happen. It was cool practical. 
practical effects in this, I remembered, like really gross, gooey aliens mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. It's probably all CGI. Well, this is I don't like, think Chris Hemsworth is real. This was like if someone <laughs> took James Gunn's wacky cosmic universe as a starting point and then made a copy of a copy of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were like, all right, well, but what you were looking at is the regular version of the wacky part of the cosmic universe. What if we showed you the wacky version of the wacky part of the cosmic universe? Um, but the amazing thing about this movie is how it dances between fantasy and sci-fi so seamlessly. Mm -hmm. Like when it's in when it's in these worlds, it's just a sci-fi, completely like Blade Runner esque world, and then it'll just like switch over, and then Idris Elba's in a fantasy movie, <laughs> you know, like Lord of the Rings style, mm -hmm. and it's just, I mean, it's fucking great. It it is also because it, it's basically like, all right, you got three chances. You suck the first two because I think those Thor movies are pretty terrible. First one, half of it is good. First one has some cool stuff. Like, some, I'm, I'm stuff. saying it has some redeemable things, but I remember thinking like, man, I love Iron Man. What else you got? And then I, I saw Captain America, which was like, oh, it was okay. And I saw Thor. I was like, he yeah. looks like Thor. There's, yeah. I mean, there's so much fun texture in this movie too. The, yeah. the uh, play at the beginning where Loki is reenacting out like the glorious uh, – uh, like the rise or rise the death of, of Loki. Loki and yeah. stuff, and mm -hmm. and like just the the texture of like the is it was I always forget his name is it Kronk no, Kronk Kronk from the stone like man. the Stone Man. I mean, and his ghost Kr like Korg. pissed off ghost. Korg, yeah, Korg, Korg, sorry, you Korg, got me thinking of uh, Emperor's Kronk. New Groove, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I know. Here's my, like, little, <laughs> my little bug friend. I was like, but oh, like, there's there's yeah. a lot of just like fun texture in this movie. It sets up Tessa Thompson, who's mm -hmm. an awesome character. Mm -hmm. It has a cool villain. Like, yeah. I mean, there's the principal of Ragnarok itself, but then Kate Blanchett is just like amazing to watch mm -hmm. all the time. Who's hotter, Kate Blanchett or Tessa Thompson? In this, I'm gonna Tessa go. Thompson. I'm gonna go. Kate Blanchett uh, yeah, as Hella because yeah. she does her. She's in her bodysuit and she does her thing where she like, <laughs> she like, oh my hair, and mm. then it turns into spikes. Yeah, and also she's like 86 years old, so you're like looking good. Yeah, and Ooh, it gives us it's such a Blanchett. fun yeah. Hulk. We get fun Hulk out of this. Oh right? yeah, but you also get pure Hulk. Yeah, yeah. we get goofy you, Hulk. It's a sort of like this is like a binge night of hulking before the next movie where there is no Hulk. Yeah. Or you get you get you get a you know. A little bit of a hangover of Hulk, and then no more Hulk. Some people predicted way, way back that Hulk couldn't handle his own movie, and the best thing you could do is be to pair him comedically with mm -hmm. another uh, Marvel character. Yeah, you some people that? predicted that. Yeah, that's a good prediction. Universal or Universal Pictures has the rights to the Hulk films. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, some people thought if they were going to do the Hulk, they some should people. pair him. Yeah, some people. Right, Marvel and they wrote was, out entire right. plots for movies mm -hmm. that should have been Iron Man three, but. And, and it had the whole kind but of, dude is and then it got downvoted but, on Reddit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that's a, it's an incredible film that transcends being a superhero. Like I, I've, mm -hmm. I love it so much. Uh, Here's which, the only problem though: does it stand on its own? I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Well, at least mentioned the play. One of the best things about it is it's a direct sequel to Thor two, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I saw Thor two oh, yeah. once. <laughs> Here's my story about watching. We, oh, should we get into it? No, <laughs> I, I think we have time, unfortunately. What? I, I, How much time has gone by? How many movies it's, have I'll, we watched? I'll, I'll talk more about Thor 2 <laughs> when we get to our my worst list. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah uh, that's, that's when you should save it for, actually. But yeah. I just love that Thor Ragnarok has a scene in it with a play that summarizes the events of Thor 2 because they know no one cares or remembers. <laughs> uh, we talked about Winter Soldier a little bit. Adam and I have it in our number two spots. Yeah. James, I was surprised you didn't include it. I put uh, Civil War in there as my as my Winter Soldier placeholder. Like two different movies to me. And, it is, and but, Winter Soldier yeah. is a cool, really cool spy thriller. Mm. Um, and it, and for me, it was what was exceptional was I did really like the first Captain America. Like I, I do love that movie a lot, and I think I love that it's a different time period. And you has just a different thought the tone. casting for Tommy Lee Jones was bad. Right? <laughs> but I like that the second movie of, of the Captain America franchise is nothing like the first. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a pretty awesome feat. And it's mm -hmm. also what that's the beginning of the Russo brothers uh, reign of terror, right? Mm -hmm. That's when yeah. they took over. Yeah, and they're like, we could, hey, let's let's make something fun. And ended up kind of redeeming in my. My mind, uh, Captain America, who's like kind of lame. It, like first movie's okay. I, think I liked it a lot. I think he's a good I character. I think the movie's not the best. I think it they're they're got some growing pains, uh, and then he's they dress him like an ass in Avengers. <laughs> oh my god, I fucking hate that Avengers. His, yeah. his it's I mean, he's still good. I, I'm like I'm like damn, they're 
they're still powering through. Like yeah. I think the casting's fantastic, and I think the writing's good. Like they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. And then Winter Soldier comes out, and they're like, yes, they nailed everything. It's the best suit, mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion, the black one that he wears in the beginning, uh, and then it's a it's a good use of his character. And then With, what happened? He in loses Avengers a bet in an they Avengers. Ruined it again. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> they ruined his suit again in Avengers Two, and then they had yeah. to fix it again. Yeah, that's true. I've just, it, it has his mind. Uh, yeah. Anyway. That's the, one of the best things about Captain America too. Is he has no arc. <laughs> yeah, he is he is a f- straight stick that was uh, you put it up and it just fell over. Captain and America. And it just points in that one direction. That's all he does. He's true good. Yeah, he is true good. Yeah, yeah. But I do love like I mean I love Captain America being a man out of time that can't like reconcile that, that and that, then also like his lost love. I do love all that. That's his only problem. <laughs> when I always wonder like if any of this is underlying racism when he he just he did it more in Avengers when he goes. Things aren't as good as they used to be. And you're like, <laughs> what is that? What do you, what do you mean? And it's like it, he's talking about like cell phones tracking you, and he's just like, okay. They had more fun with it in Winter Soldier when he's like, oh, Nirvana, I'll write that down. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then you know, you see that he's not a racist. I'm such a sucker for underdogs too. When he's like little scrawny Captain mm-hmm. America, like pre mm-hmm. pre transformation, okay. it like just it gets me in the gut. But like where, I can't. where do you fall in the Agent Carter part? Um, I, I'm one of the people I think that was happy that they got together. No, no, no. I mean the fact that she was like, come soldier, I have no sexual interest in you because you're a skinny boy. And then he gets all buff. She goes, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it professional. <laughs> <laughs> no interest. And she has, she just like goes, sits in a chair. Like, oh God. <laughs> Holy shit. It's the natural reaction. <laughs> well, they, they made it yeah. happen in Endgame. I, uh, <laughs> we, uh, uh, three of us, not Ryan, of course. <laughs> <laughs> had, had Infinity War on our list, and then James, you had Endgame. That was as my well. seventh. Remember, um, Endgame was your seventh. Uh, the Infinity, Infinity War. War. I think yeah. Infinity War. I, uh, the reason I choose that over Endgame is to me it feels like the a more uh, comprehensive movie, like film, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in terms of how it tells the story. Endgame is an amazing feat. Now, uh, Avengers: Infinity War, Endgame was supposed to be one movie. You know, I mean, do we count that as two movies? They, at the end they of the, announced Kill Bill one and two. I, I, do, it I mean, movies. I'll throw another best of on there. I'm just somewhere. saying. Like, <laughs> I, I kind of feel like it's the same I film. P- I put it two because technically it's what. Six hours or something of movie, and I think hey. that counts as two movies. <laughs> they made an announcement. They're like, "Hey, uh, we're actually gonna split this into two. Mm. That means I, no, that it was I, I think, one. I think the announcement point. was it was Infinity War Part One and Part Two. That's yeah. they announced oh, it was it gonna be that. three. No, 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 no. no, no. no. It was gonna, uh, they, were, they were calling it Infinity War Part One and Part Two. Oh, got but it. then they, they the then title. they changed that. We're gonna. I don't cha- think there's any way they ever planned yeah. to do that as one movie. That's I like think they did. Possible. I think they they were planning until well, they started writing it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, according to Ryan, just one Thanos movie. Now, I'm, I think Infinity War is the it's the better, more rewatchable movie, and yeah. it does have that Empire Strikes Back vibe at the end. Oh yeah. Endgame has the best buildup of all time. Of any Marvel movie, which is the big giant battle that's twenty minutes, and you're just you're, you're like, thank you VFX people for all that you've yeah. given us. To, to think yeah. for me about about Endgame, um, I think Infinity War is like the two towers, and Endgame is like the Return of the King. Nine Eleven, sure. Oh. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, <damn it. laughs> you didn't say Twin Towers. Um, <laughs> the two towers. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. But um, and so I think that. But my, the coolest thing for me is how Endgame managed to be a retrospective on the Marvel franchise, mm-hmm. going back in time and hitting on those different moments. Yeah. It just, um, it just like your problem with the first Avengers, it takes a long time to get yeah, there. Yeah, that, that movie has an but, hour well, of but the you first, need, you the need first that, hour. You need that break. Jesus. It takes a long time to get to that action set piece, yeah, but it's in the aftermath of mm-hmm. the most major thing, which, again, going back to the Iron Man 2 comparison, Iron Man 2 is a wet fart. And then it goes, and now let's pick up the pieces in Avengers, which I'm like, no, you can only do that if it ends like Infinity War. Infinity mm-hmm. War, I'm like, oh, yeah, we need to figure out what what does the world look like yeah, now yeah. after all of this. They, they so open I think it, the time is justified. They open it with an action piece, which feels hollow, which is what it's supposed to do. Because mm-hmm. it's like, yay, we killed the bad guy. Oh, yeah. Well, time to go back home where... There's, it's just the world looks dead. I mean, and it, everyone's upset. But as sad. as me, the audience watching, I was like, I was like, oh shit! Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I mean, I didn't know that time travel was going to be a part of it. And say what you will about using time travel for stuff. That now we have a giant can of worms opened up upon the Mar- Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, but yeah, uh, yeah okay. I was just like, 
I was like, oh, fuck. This mo- what is the pacing of this movie? <laughs> like, it's just all over the place. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah. Whereas Infinity War, I think, is just more constant. I think I've rewatched yeah. that one more than oh, yeah. any of the other ones. I'm I like, had Infinity War higher. It's, I made that decision. It's it's just, a bit, it, yeah. You can't have one without the other either. Mm-hmm. And But yeah, I got the ending of Endgame is so damn good. It, yeah. the, the beginning, yeah. that they just spent way too much time, like, sulking on dead earth. Like where they're just kind of like everyone was sad, and I get like you're saying, like we had to go check in on with all these people, but it did not need to be an hour. I, I think in hindsight, it's like thirty minutes. It still feels like an hour. I mean, it's a check in on all the characters. I don't know. I I didn't mind it. It's I was okay with it. Look, you, yeah, I think you. It would have got a haircut. I think it would have felt rushed otherwise. But yeah. no, I think that's the problem. Is people will you will watch it? You will watch Infinity War from beginning to end. And then end game, you'll fast forward to the end and watch the big fight. Yeah, yeah. pretty that's, much. That's yep. my feeling anyway. But it's all the, – the build up to Captain America's scene is oh – God, it probably go down in history as like the greatest superhero build up of all time. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you could ever top that. Well, again, it hasn't been since like Lord of the Rings that I felt that culmination <sighs> of like – emotion and stuff like yeah. I just haven't felt like oh my god this is a payoff this is a payoff that no media can ever achieve again but but yeah. yeah but it's also yeah I know we're talking about Infinity War sorry but like and anyway yeah sorry sorry at least I got off no, track no 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 I, we my can bad. talk about them in conjunction with each other I think, I'm the I think, I think that's game on there anyway so yeah that's I think fine Ryan's right is that they work in concert together yeah. I, I really do like Endgame it's just I just feel like Infinity War is the better film but I, I agree I agree but I'm still gonna Enjoy both of them. Yeah. I'm, Infinity I'm, War I'm, 4. I, I put Endgame at 5. And you know, Infinity <laughs> doesn't, this was Infinity doesn't <laughs> have Ronan. Which one? <laughs> the Infinity good War doesn't the good have one. any Jeremy Renner in it. Remember? Yeah. Oh. Not in it at That's all. Insane. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they mentioned that he's under house arrest. Like, you could at least check in on him. <laughs> <laughs> you could call him. Yeah. More like Scarlet Bitch. Um, I think I, we've covered kind of the ones that James and Adam and I share. So now it's time to get to, into Ryan's. Yeah, baby. We have to do a completely different episode to cover Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> we have to do our Infinity War. All right, go ahead, Ryan. Um, so, Ryan, you had Iron Man 3 as number six. Shane Black's Iron mm. Man 3. Yeah, I love that movie. Why? Mm-hmm. Um, well, here, why do you hate it so much? It's on your, your it's worst. His number, it's his number one worst and my number two worst. And my number yeah. six best. I hate it because they did the thing that the Iron Man cartoon did, which is it got bored of itself and said, what if Iron Man just remote controlled his robot instead of getting in the suit? So there were so no So the stakes. remote control was was your main uh, – That was – that. That summed it up for me. Okay. When, when he drove in front of the truck and it into a bunch of pieces and he's literally on a yacht – uh-huh. Going, whoa, close. Like, there's lo- there's nothing at stake. Like, but what about the people falling out of the airplane? I don't know who they are. I don't care. <laughs> I I felt that I agree with Adam that watching Iron Man 3, I felt like nothing was at stake. Nothing in the world. Like, and again, now we're, we're His relationship it. with that little kid. What's oh, his, what's, yeah. Who, what's the little kid's name? I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. Kid. But it was like, it, it felt like nothing was at stake for the course of the whole movie. I think it's cool. I think Shane Black's cool. He makes great movies. But this was, he, they should have given him, like, a Guardians if they wanted. Because this feels – it's Iron Man who feels like he's the spinal cord of this whole thing, except that he's like, well, I'm not going to make the brainstem. I'm going to just make this other part. Like, this should have been, like, the, the off-world adventures of Iron Man, and mm-hmm. then I would have been more fine with it. Felt like it didn't add anything okay. to, the, to the building uh, cinematic universe – I felt like it made him seem like a worse Iron Man because he doesn't even, he's barely in the suit for the whole fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Gwyneth Paltrow's in the suit more than he is. Mm-hmm. Um, I like all these things, why by didn't, the way. I didn't <laughs> like the part when he was floating around with rocket boots and a handgun. That to me doesn't, you don't build up to that. I don't remember I think, any jokes, I think, I think Guy <laughs> Pierce. <laughs> Guy this Pierce, movie is hilarious if you go back and watch it. Oh, oh, I, I, saw, mean, I, saw, I definitely haven't. probably laughed more than I enjoyed anything, but like Guy, Guy Pierce is the exact same character, only worse, as Sam Rockwell in Iron Man 2. He's <sighs> just a less entertaining version mm. of Hammer but, or whatever. But, uh, Ryan, why you like it? Okay, so this movie is like the, the – of all the movies in the MCU, this is like the troll movie, right? <laughs> Shane Black, I feel like, who is a, such a weird director to get for one of these movies. He, uh, you know, m- maker of Lethal Weapon and mm-hmm. Last Action Hero and stuff like that. And, and – he made he 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 
pulls a rug from all your expectations. He doesn't, you know, you know, it's basically a buddy movie with him and this little kid for most of the movie. And it, he's not in the suit, which is I thought was cool. After the disappointment of Iron Man 2. And then the whole Mandalorian thing or, or, uh, or what is it? Mandarin. You know how mm-hmm. you ha- I-, I love the idea of you had this villain. You build him up as the villain of your movie. Oh, and then at the end, he's an actor. Like, I thought that whole thing was awesome. Like, and mm-hmm. I just hadn't seen it in a film before, like, uh, that your villain is not the real villain sure, in, in, the way that, in the way that oh, uh, yeah. uh, you think he is. And, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it, uh, it just – it was funny, good action, pulled uh, the rug on your expectations. You're allowed and, to like it. I'm not no, mad yeah. at you. I agree with those points. Yeah. yeah. I think the problem is when it's a piece of a pie. It'd be like if you ordered a pizza no. – and it's pepperoni everywhere, and then one has a brownie on it. And I'm like, why is there a fucking one slice of brownie? I don't pizza? judge these movies based on how they fit into the ultimate puzzle of the MCU. But you it's know, how they got, the, but but they're they're all, you got to judge each as the the fun time that you had watching <laughs> yeah. it. I didn't have right. fun. I I, I was, I was definitely you, ang- more angry than I was enjoying myself. You guys are obviously like super comic book people. No, no, no. I don't, really about things. I don't know anything, anything no. before I go sit down. I'm like, I don't know who these people are. Well, as far, I'm pretty sure the uh, what's the Mandarin character was it like a, a racist, like Chinese stereotype or something. So <laughs> I, I'm not the now one. He's Ben Kingsley. I, I'm not the one going. How oh, no? How could they not? Because oh, he's Fu Man. Chew, right? Or was or uh, he's the dragon character? I don't know. It's all based on comics. It's based on comic stuff that I I'm sort of interested in. And yes, Ryan, I've read a comic book here and there, <laughs> but I'm like I don't go in this and go they ruined it because like I read most of the Civil War comics and I read the Infinity Gauntlet run and everything. You just said you sat down and you said I didn't like that he had a remote control on the vest. Thing. I didn't like. I it. thought that was a cool I'm remote just saying control because, vest. Well, I'm just saying, harken back to when I was a kid. And I remember being like, I don't know much about Iron Man. And there was an Iron Man Saturday morning cartoon. Mm -hmm. And I watched – and most of the time he was remote controlling robots. (laughs) And I thought it was stupid. And and from then on I was like, unless he's in a Marvel versus Capcom game, I don't care about Iron Man. He sucks. Oh, they put War Machine in. He's better anyway. Who cares? Which is when you're you're coming up with your premise and someone in the room says – more pepper pots and everyone goes <laughs> starts clapping and saying yes and mm-hmm. then they go what if pepper pots was iron man mm-hmm. and then every yeah and like what's but what's robert downey do junior doing that during the sequence mm-hmm. not being Hanging iron man out with a kid and yeah. they're clapping and everyone's clapping well you know what james we should appreciate robert downey junior when we have him because he dies and we have to deal with that in spider-man far from home <sighs> Which is the third best movie on Ryan's list. Did you all see this one? Yes, I, did. I liked yeah. it. I did. I saw Y'all everyone liked, liked it. it, huh? Yeah, yeah. I would put, this is more on my enjoyment side this, than it is on my This is not. the cheesecake you have after the meal. <laughs> okay. I would say. Well, yeah, it was fine. To yeah, me, this was like a great, like, John Hughes-esque uh, uh, oh. summer road trip, or, yeah, summer vacation kind of a film. And a Spider-Man movie second, which is what I liked about it, was that it was just a fun... High school kids being high school kids on vacation. Grieving. And, oh, one of them happens to be Spider-Man. <laughs> I thought that was a cool uh, concept for a film. Okay. What did you think of that scene? I thought it was cool. It's not in the movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought the tra- I thought it was cool in the trailer. No, they end up okay. filming so many things and putting CGI on we it. We get more happy. Changing. I don't remember it. Mm-hmm. No, I, 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 I agree. I like this movie, too. And I think, But, again, I like things. I do like mm-hmm. them like we've mentioned in concert with the grand design mm-hmm. and but him going on a road trip through Europe a place that's relatively been untouched by the Marvel cinematic universe thus far mm-hmm. seems to be very smart but very much in character because you can't do a Spider-Man swinging around New York City anymore there's our, we already know that there's more equipped things to handle those situations so mm-hmm. putting him somewhere else was I thought a great decision I thought uh Jake Gyllenhaal Great casting, and they they kind of did the Iron Man three thing Mysterio uh, too. Like he's he's yeah, he's not the real villain. Someone argue better. I me, I argue my my, (laughs) much better. My only criticism, (laughs) well, because I always thought Jake Gyllenhaal would have been a great if like ten years ago, fifteen years ago, would have been an amazing Peter Parker and Spider Man. Because we got we got uh, um, what's his face? Toby Toby Mm McGuire, who was Mm -hmm. a really great Peter Parker. And a terrible Spider-Man. Andrew uh, Garfield. And Andrew Garfield, who is an okay Spider-Man and a terrible Peter Parker. Uh-huh. Now, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal could have been both. Yeah. He could have been the perfect one. You know I who, think Tom Holland's great. You know, Sam Raimi thought that too. 
when Tobey Maguire like broke his back, like, well, get, let's get the guy who looks like him. Mm. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Music. My only, my only, <laughs> re- honestly, my only real criticism of this movie is the Mysterio reveal is too. I mean, I guess if you don't read any comics, like me, maybe I had no idea. Okay, but if you've ever mm-hmm. heard of Spider-Man before, yeah. you know Mysterio is one of his. Greatest nemesis is nemeses. Mm. Nemesi. Nemesi. And I thought there maybe could have been a better way to hide that reveal where if yeah. they just make him, there's tons of other characters that they could have said he was. A throwaway comic book character from the from the Spider-Man Marvel Universe that you just say Jake Gyllenhaal's this character and then no, not only is he not that character, he is Mysterio. And you'd be like, oh, shit. Because there was a bunch of marketing material yeah. about that movie that was talking about Mysterio. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was like, well, he's going to be a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Right. No, no, he's good now. And the movie never convinced me otherwise. Yeah. Your number one was a curveball that Adam told me to take off. <laughs> it's Deadpool. <laughs> Adam, why? It's the best It's the best uh, well, part of the MCU. Well, when Elise sent the email and I read it, uh, it said the three letters MCU yeah which are marvel movies made by marvel studios not fox searchlight or Deadpool doesn't Sony. play by the rules adam i know right. it. He's i kind of right i'm I know a part that. of the mcu and this was your number 1 uh, dude this movie rocks all right <laughs> deadpool rocks okay. is an awesome movie it's like it's fun yeah, yeah so fun As it aged hardcore well. The, the 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 violence is badass, you know, and like it's super violent, super mm. R-rated, which I wish all our Marvel movies would be R-rated. They'd be, all? they'd be all better for it, <laughs> you know. Okay. There's I that, mean, okay. you can just get away with more shit, and and they did, and it's it's freaking good. I have an like, unpopular opinion, but I enjoy Deadpool 2 more. I love Deadpool the, too. The joke about the the team that he forms and then what happens to them tickles my funny bones yeah, so much. Yeah, that was a great scene. Yeah, in sequence. I think it has good moments. I'm looking forward to Deadpool it's being put it, being somewhat castrated. <laughs> Why? And being like, I'd actually like to see only because. Don't take this the wrong way. Okay. I think when you make a rated R movie, if you're doing it for art's sake. I think you get some you get some good stuff. You get a parasite type movie uh-huh. or something where it's like, okay, you you have more adult themes. But when you're like, we can say all the poop jokes we want. We can show all the blood. Like I think Deadpool lends itself to the violence, and I think if that's why it gets a radar, great. But if it's like just so you can say more fucks, but, I don't I don't think that's gonna make it a better the, movie. But I, I in general I agree with you. But yeah. it's, it's, it, it is true to the character though. He is an immature mm-hmm. asshole, you know, that breaks the fourth wall. So I think yeah. that it's kind of like this. It, it needs to be uh, he, more fucks, more poop jokes, well, uh, and a, more a, all that. A, a suggestion I saw on Reddit where all the best ideas come from. I actually agreed with this one besides James's uh, Iron Man 3 script that mm-hmm. he posted and got downvoted into oblivion. <laughs> uh, someone said that it would actually be really funny if one day Deadpool got put into the MCU and he's constantly getting bleeped. And he's aware of it. And he's like, what the hell is going on? And they're going to do that. And then it's not going to turn out great. <laughs> That'd be cool. And we're going to go, and someone's going, why did they do that? And people are like, well, it sounded good on paper. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They might. Uh, yeah. I think they'll, whatever they do, they'll pull it I off. I think. Aren't through adversity. I, I, I feel like if you have Deadpool in the actual MCU, like all, it's, it, it, it opens up too big of a can of worms. You know, like. Well, no, they have to find a yeah. way of introducing X-Men. Uh, Which is Deadpool's going to be the entry point because it's well, in this weird reboot. Bottom line, land. no one expected to get a good Deadpool movie. Like I think everyone one. had abandoned that well, being a possibility. A classic. Mostly Fox. They they didn't think Deadpool was worth no. anything, and that's why they made him the way he was in uh, Origins Wolverine. It was like, no one likes Deadpool. And shout out to the mm-hmm. screen, uh, Rhett Reese and whatever the, his writing partner is, the, the screenplay writers. That, that's a great screenplay if you've Zombie, ever Zombie Land guys? Read I, I read the script, actually. Yeah, yeah it's, one it's of awesome. Few. Yeah. Well, if you want to sit around in your underwear like Deadpool does, why don't you make him some Mac Weldon's? Adam's going to tell you about how great they are. There's a reminder that this episode of Film House is brought to you by Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. It is honestly one of the easiest things you can do. They have a beautiful website with a beautiful layout with all the things that you need to cover your body all nice and softy. Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants and more that you will ever wear. I can personally attest to wearing their underwear every day and sleeping in some of the finest sleepwear that I've ever owned. They have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means they eliminate odor. They want you to be comfortable, so if you do not like your first pair of underwear, you can keep it and they will still refund you. No questions asked. 
Not only does Mack Weldon's underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well too. It is great for working out. Once again, I wear these things in the morning, take them to the gym, and they last pretty much until I'm ready to go to sleep and put them on again the next day. It's fantastic. I always feel the most confident when I got these bad boys hugging onto my bottoms. Mack Weldon really does value its loyal customers. That's why they have created the Weldon Blue Loyalty Program. Here's how it works. You create an account, which is totally free. At level one, you place an order for any amount and never pay for shipping again. Level two, once you purchase over $200 worth of products from Mack Weldon, not only will you continue to receive free shipping, but you will also start saving 20% on every order you make for the next year. Level 2 also grants you access to new products before they are released to anyone else, as well as free gifts added to future orders. I've been personally wearing Mack Weldon for years now. They've been a sponsor of ours for a very long time, and I'm very happy that they continue to support us. So go ahead and support them and let them know that we're doing a good job of directing you at a good place to get some nice, nice clothes. So for 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com and enter promo code FILMHOUSE. Once again, that's 20% off your first order. That's MacWeldon.com, promo code FILMHOUSE, F-I-L-M-H-A-U-S. Thank you, Mac Weldon. Thank you, Adam, for your words about Mac Weldon. Hey, Thank you, Mac Weldon, for. for your sponsorship. Uh, now it's time to talk about the worst. We've kind of touched on the worst a little bit already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of um, Ryan's list? <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Um, Just kidding. My worst one, or number, not worst one, my number five was Avengers Age of Ultron. Movie Fair. sucks. Mm -hmm. Movie sucks. <laughs> we it, talked about it. It has bit. moments. It's weird because, yeah, it has moments. I think that's why I didn't include it on my bottom five because, yeah. like, I, James Spader is a great Ultron he voice. Is, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ultron's kind of cool when mm -hmm. he isn't, like, too close to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It has Hulkbuster. Like, there's, there's, good there, I feel like the action is well paced a little bit more. I, I always <laughs> yeah. liked how the movie opens with a comic book splash page of them all like jumping through the woods. It's a great but, opening. Yeah. Um, Quicksilver. Does have Quicksilver. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he adds anything to the movie. I, I, and he dies he be, in this one? Yeah. yeah will he, he be back for WandaVision? Tune in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he might it's be. It's going to be uh, Evan Peters. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's so much of this that's so slow. Yeah. Uh, it's, and it's a long build up just to see the Hulk fight Iron Man, which mm -hmm. is the best part of the movie. Um, yeah. I just, I know here, it does, it builds up Thor Ragnarok, which is good. But because Hulk flies away, we all forgot that happens. Mm -hmm. It's because he's like, me can't pound. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> puss. <laughs> me break her in half. <laughs> Uh, so like that's that's messed up. But d Ryan, did you know the original Joss Whedon idea that they they said no to? What? So you know the scene where uh, they're trying to like stall Ultron because you know they're just he's, he has that they're trying to protect that little like hammer thing that because mm -hmm. if he hits it, it the whole thing falls. There's a part where Joss Whedon originally wrote it where he's beating up on Iron Man and he's like, almost kills him, and it's like he's like you think he's gonna die and then he like punches his helmet off and it's Bruce Banner. Oh, and he shit. goes, oh shit! And he hulks out, and then he beats the shit out. Of it. He was like there to distract him, and blah blah. blah. And they're like, that would have been cool. Well, they said, well, no, Hulk needs to get in a ship and fly away, sad. <laughs> and they said that doesn't work. And Joss Whedon's like, oh, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm done with your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go make a good movie, <laughs> Justice League. Ooh, no, a yeah. movie that Adam and I were brave enough to put on our list was Captain Marvel. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, that's that's definitely there. That I throw that down there in my like. Because you forgot it existed. I did. It's one I of did it's one of happened. Ryan's favorites because at the end of Spider Man Far From Home, and he goes, "Those were scrolls." <laughs> I remember that he stood up and he clapped. Mm -hmm. He's one only, of those guys. Only movie I haven't seen in the MCU, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. So, so the so the scroll reveal at the end of Spider Man did what to you? You left. You were asleep. I did, well. I was more confused in the in, in Infinity War or whatever when Captain Marvel, you know, uh, saves the day, and I'm like, well, I guess she can do anything. Why wasn't she here the whole fucking time? Yeah, you know? they explain that. Yeah. There's lots of problems all mm. around the universe that are apparently universe mm. scale problems. And that she's she has to solve. so badass, but she like doesn't have a, a schedule. Like like she couldn't be there ten minutes earlier. Yeah. You know? it is weird where she's like she's. Like she only can go six. She can blast beams out of her legs and go anywhere, but only at sixty-five miles per hour. You know, like so. Like if she is often late for things. Don't worry. You're probably wondering though where she got her powers from. It was from a jet engine. Uh, Next question. Cool. 
It's not great. No, it's it made a billion dollars. So what the hell do I know? Oh, okay, must be good. No, it's real unfortunate because I do think that the backlot, like the treatment of Brie Larson, is unjustified. It's kind, of, it's pretty shitty. Mm-hmm. Um, she's just acting and playing a character. Um, but yeah, this movie's dank. Yeah, and I not mean, the, not the good dank. Wait, oh, bad I think dank. It's a bad yeah. script. It's bad dank. dank? That's it, like, yeah. like it, like oh, this room is dank. You know, there's there's mold bad. or something, yeah. yeah but oh, not, yeah. Really it felt bad. like this should have come out around the time as uh, Iron Man two, where you go, oh, they're still working out the kinks. Yeah, it was like, oh, weird that this felt yeah. real rushed. That's, that's how I felt about it. I was like, yeah. this movie had twenty predecessors showing how to make a good she, Marvel movie. She ended up also not being super important because they they sort of they do the uh, the ending of Infinity War where you're like, oh my god. Uh, Nick Fury, the last thing he did before he disappeared was call Captain Marvel. She's going to change everything. She just shows up like, yeah, I got other stuff to do, and (laughs) flies away. And then she shows up again, and then Thanos, uh, through ingenuity, punches her harder or something. What does he do? He does something. He he fools her, and he beats her. Yeah, Mm. I don't know. This (laughs) is just a lot not working. Ben Mendelsohn's always a joy to watch, but... Love it. They they have a song that is from the wrong time period in a movie that is all... Set the time period. Which one? What like what is it? Just a girl? Or they I mean, play oh, just yeah. a girl oh, at the, that. At the end is. of a movie. I at hated the end of the that. movie when she like is like She's, destroying stuff and it's like, okay, because you you you're control a F a song that had girl, except you've also established what year it is, and that song isn't out yet. <laughs> well the movie takes place in the nineties. Yeah. I think it But they established what year in the nineties and just a girl. So it, it's not out yet. That, okay. That song doesn't exist yet. I didn't do enough research. <laughs> and and it's not like it's playing diegetically in the film, but it's still like yeah. you just you you scrape the bottom of the barrel to try mm-hmm. and find another it. intro movie that didn't seem to learn from its predecessors. We touched on this. Ryan did like this movie. It was Ant Man. I do. I like both of them. Um, I mean, Ant Man and the Wasp. I thought it was yeah, like leaps Ant-Man and bounds Ant-Man better. Mm-hmm. The only problem with Ant Man and the Wasp is it shouldn't have come out right after Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was like, I was like, give me more of that. And they're like. Three weeks before the events of Infinity War. Oh. Things are boring and normal. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne's here. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Yeah. Um, I didn't hate Ant-Man. I just It just it felt like a, I don't know, felt like work. It's a middle-of-the-road Marvel mm-hmm. movie. It, like, well, these movies should be here to showcase why you want to see them and other things. Yep. But I feel like, and this is most of my worst list, is the movies I have make me never want to watch these again and only see them as supporting characters in other places. So I feel like, like we mentioned earlier, I think Ant-Man is significantly less entertaining than he is in other movies. In basically all the yeah. other movies, he's way funnier and charismatic mm-hmm. and cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has more of a purpose. I still, It's still unclear to me why he's Ant-Man. He's I, a thief. I watched the movie, which is his origin story, and I still don't know why he's Ant Man. I remember most of the movie. It was is an accident, in, right? Well, yeah, but that's what it seems like. Even, except that, even then, though, they're like, you could, sh- you should train ants. He's like, it's hard. They're like, well, Michael Douglas has like a newspaper article, and like this is the guy, and I'm like, <laughs> what? It doesn't. Other than the news, it doesn't say anything about why he's the perfect guy to be in an ant suit. <laughs> like think, nothing about it. I think the thought was it's because he's expendable. I'm almost positive that was originally. He was like, I don't care if he goes to jail. He's a criminal. And I know he can steal stuff. And but I get, you could pick literally. It doesn't It doesn't really pay yeah. him off as the hero name, he should be name, coming. Name one be. other person he could use like his daughter. Name one. <laughs> um, who he then uses. That being said, I, I give Ant-Man both one and two credit because he is like the for, He's the, you know, ousted the dad who isn't there. Mm-hmm. And his ex-wife has moved on and started a new family. But the new dad there is great. He, and everyone loves him. Uh-huh. And it's a very against type play for that. They could have really just done the most basic thing. And so yeah. I always loved his relationship with his ex-wife's new husband because it's really good. I still would have loved to see. I love that scene. I just I want to be in that alternate reality where the Edgar, Wright. Edgar Wright made it mm-hmm. and just did whatever he wanted. Yeah. Just that's all. Yeah. That's all. I mean, it's too bad. In that, I, I can't fault the movie for that because they they just moved ahead and did what they could with mm-hmm. what they had, and yeah. it like you, it sucks that it constantly reminds you of what could have been. And yeah. I'm like, I still want to see an Edgar Wright superhero movie just to see what he does with it. Every one of my uh, ones on my worst is like a uh, uh, what could have been kind of situation, or it's just like they, it was fucked by their own 
ex- my own personal expectations of what I wanted them to be. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. I loved Guardians one but you so don't much. Like volume two. That I that number two was a, such yourself. a disappointment. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you guys like two a lot. I didn't like it a lot. I did think that. With how much I loved Guardians 1, I would love Guardians 2 a lot more. But mm-hmm. I kind of watched it, and then this, and then that was it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I watched it again, and I was like, oh, no, I really like the opening mm-hmm. scene. Yeah, I like the opening. And Kurt Russell, like, I can't believe they figured out how to make a planet a character. And Kurt Russell was really He's fantastically cast as, as yeah. Chris Pratt's dad. Also, I got four um, syllables for you. Sylvester Stallone. Uh, makes a cameo. <laughs> yeah. But but there was a lot in that movie that I didn't care about. And yeah. I, I also wasn't crazy about how at the very beginning they were like, let's split up. And I'm like, oh. Exactly. Yeah, that <laughs> sucked. And, and uh, it certainly wasn't as funny as the others. And also it kind of was one of those things where uh, – you you see how it's made like like the first one was such a surprise whereas the second one like the second that every time uh, a, a new pop song would start and then there would be an action sequence I'm like okay we've kind of done this mm-hmm. several times and and I, I think he's trying to get a lot of mileage out of these 70s pop songs mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. It, it's not really earned like in the first mm-hmm. one I feel like interesting now you're I know what Elise is gonna say it's Elise loves this movie because it, it's it has one of the best setups of all time. And it's going to have one of the greatest payoffs. Take it away, Elise. No, what's that? The Michael a- Rooker? Adam Warlock. Oh, Adam Warlock. <laughs> Where is Adam Warlock? What are we going to meet him? <laughs> they show him. They show him in his little... It, the remember little... the woman who's not Tilda Swinton? Yeah. The gold people. Like the gold people. She goes, she goes, and behold, my greatest achievement, and it's a test tube, and she goes, his name will be... Adam, <laughs> and, and then the one guy stands yeah, up. One and guy in the theater class. Yeah, and then you hear the other guy. So Adam Warlock's like, he's like, he sucks, but like, <laughs> he's like, but like you're gonna make him cool. But that was like, like seven movies ago at this point, and you're like, this is what they did with Thanos, though. Um, they show, they pr- or we're getting getting ready. the Thanos. I, I, yeah. I liked um, Mantis. Mantis a lot. I thought she was a, a fun like foil to set up with Drax, and mm-hmm. like that that was a, a fun. Pairing, mm-hmm. um, I thought Michael Rooker, as cheesy as it is, the emotional payoff of like him with Star Lord, mm-hmm. I I do really like. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a very but touching moment. You hate it? You don't like it? <sighs> no, not really. Like, like he, to me, he was kind of a supporting character in that first one, and he's good. But then to make him such a crucial, important part of the uh, uh, in the second one, but. Make him retroactively important kind of didn't work for me. I'm like, Who are you talking about? Right. Michael Rooker? Yeah, Michael yeah. Rooker. Whose character's name is? <laughs> I don't remember it's any Yondu. of these people's names. Yondu, that's you right. fool. <laughs> also, a, a thing in the comic we books. We only that... know these because we play Marvel Puzzle Quest. <laughs> yeah. Some of these characters are important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's good in the game. Gotcha. His uh, comic book covers. Ugly. Um, we've talked about <laughs> like the, uh, the Thor, the first two Thors a little bit. Snooze mm-hmm. fest. Um, especially Dark World, which I think. Oh my God. I, do we think Dark well, World is the worst? It's probably the worst out of all of them. It's really terrible when the theater you go to, for some reason, it doesn't have subtitles baked in. And so when the Dark Elves are talking, you're just kind of picking it up, I guess. Well, were you yeah. pirating this movie? No. When we went to the theater, there was like, it was a digital, it was like one of the new digital projectors where I guess they could do it in different languages. Uh huh. And. It just didn't do any subtitles oh. for when it was supposed to. So, like, it's happened to two movies. It was that and an apes movie. Mm-hmm. When I was like, <laughs> for, for the longest time, it was like, it wasn't until I watched it on like DVD or streaming that I was like, they had subtitles. We, we got this digital. We like digital rented it or something. Uh-huh. And it was the same thing, though. For the elves, you had to turn on the captions or something like that. It's, it wasn't just in the movie, uh, but we didn't realize. Which is a really bad sign. Yeah. When there's a, sequ- a scene happening between the villains and they're talking to each yeah. other, and you're like, I think I'm supposed to understand by Rick the context. Cha, but I Nisa don't. He, and then like, it wasn't okay. until I was like, I was like, what the fuck is happening that I rewound it and I saw you had to turn, like, in the options, turn That's on ridiculous. captions, <laughs> and then it captioned them. And I was like, this is important. <laughs> but I, the fact that I continued on is like yeah. a scary thing. <laughs> um, this movie is terrible. Yeah. It's garbage. Well, they also replace one of the actors, one of Thor's best friends. No one noticed, and then they killed off the other two in Thor Ragnarok, and no one noticed. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like, who are those people? Yep, no one cared. Um, it made Natalie Portman way too important to the f- franchise. Like everything seemed like a big coincidence, which is something I hate. Like yeah. I know you have to draw out your hero, but 
she, everything involving her was just a big coincidence. Yeah. No idea who the villain is. I know he's a dark elf. He was, no, he was, no idea anything other than yeah. that. And then you got the red gem. And it also sucks because they teamed up Loki and Thor, and they were really charismatic together. But it's it's like this thing that's covered in a dark sand cloud. The whole, they're also like, <laughs> and we're going to London. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, just not yeah. not good. Yeah. Not good. I don't Any, know. Nothing good about it. Anyway, I think that's fair to say. Pretty One bad. that I'm sure we're going to get some flack for because it was an Academy Award nominee <laughs> um, was Black Panther. I who, who else had that? Me. Ryan did. And, and honestly, I yeah. think it's one of the weaker Marvel movies, mm-hmm. it's, it, which uh, is a shame because it has a lot that I really like in it. Uh, like Shuri, I really like. And I, and I like M'Baku. And, I like the, the villain. Uh, Michael yeah, B. Jordan. Yeah, longer. he's great. He was great. But that's that's my biggest criticism of Black Panther. Everything other than Black Panther was really cool. <laughs> Everything <laughs> other yeah. than er, yeah. Angela Bassett mm-hmm. was great in that movie. They got the big lip there. And, cool. and every single scene that T'Challa was in, he was the most boring part of that whole scene. And For I'm sure. like, this is not yeah. how the, he's way cooler in Civil War. And he's way cooler in Infinity War. Like, yeah. he's way cooler in all these other movies. Why is he the worst part of his movie? What don't you like better, Ryan? Well, kind of like I said We're going to find out <laughs> after a word from our sponsor, Shudder. <laughs> this week's Film House is brought to you by AMC Network's Shudder. Shudder is a premium streaming video service super serving members with the best selection in genre entertainment, covering horror, thrillers, and the supernatural. Shudder's expanding library of film, TV series, and originals is available on most streaming devices in the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Ireland, and Germany. For $5.99 per month or $56.99 per year, you can stream the largest, fastest-growing, human-curated selection of thrilling and dangerous entertainment. It's been called the Netflix of horror for a reason. Shudder has a unique collection of exclusive and original films and series, horror classics and blockbuster hits, including the hit creep show TV series produced by Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead and the Nick Cage movie Mandy. With Shudder, you'll have unlimited access to stream ad-free on your, all of your favorite devices, including iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, Xbox One, Amazon Fire TV, Google Chromecast, Roku, and Android devices. I love horror and couldn't wait to check out the app because there's a lot of content. I was pleased to learn that Hellraiser 1 and 2 are available to Marathon. Shudder also has Channel Zero, a really cool anthology series that I missed season 3 of, so I'm watching that. I love that the platform curates movies into collections, so for example, if you're in the mood for a horror noir, you can easily find titles that fit that genre. You can get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content right now. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes titles like the acclaimed Tigers Are Not Afraid, One Cut of the Dead, Revenge, and the all-new series The Deadlands premiering this January. To try Shudder free for 30 days, go to http colon forward slash forward slash shudder.com. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R and use promo code FILMHOUSE. That's Shudder.com, promo code FILMHOUSE. Thank you, Shudder, for your sponsorship. Ryan, take it away. Take it away. I'm sorry I trolled you it's like all right, that. Elise. I, I trolled you in the way that Iron Man threw. Brave, one? brave, yeah, brave Ryan. the bills. I get it. <laughs> sorry. Brave Black Panther. Sir, has, Ryan. Same reason Guardians of the Galaxy. And I had such high expectations. When I heard Black Panther was, was going to make a movie, I was like, hell yeah. I can't wait to see this. You know, this mm-hmm. sounds like the perfect setup for a film, you know. We're and, going to Wakanda. Know, going mm-hmm. to Wakanda. You know, we're going to this imagine or not or invisible country, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that's super technological. The whole setup sounds awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Black Panther seems like a cool character to have. A, a, he was a, cool you know. too in Civil War. He was, in my opinion, pretty he's cool. briefly in there though. But uh, but when I saw it, I'm just kind of like, like exactly what you're saying. I'm like, I found myself an hour in, kind of being like, I I, I don't really Black Panther. The character isn't that cool. Everyone, everything else is a little cooler. But I don't mm-hmm. really care what's going on. I also. Yeah, like 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 it was like one of those. I'm checking my watch too many times during the movie. I'm going, well, this kind of sucks. I don't really have any other more important cri- criticisms other than that. It Just was not fun it's to watch. Weird. But it's weird though because the production design of, of oh, Wakanda yeah. production design really paid off the promise of a super cool invisible place. Uh, it was a thing, something I feel like I hadn't seen before at all in that universe. But a lot of the CG was really murky. The, the the when it was just people with spears fighting each other, like in that uh, in, when they go to Hong Kong or whatever, they're South Korea. I think they, they thought they were chasing Andy Circus through Hong Kong. But, you might be right. But um, when they're doing that, cool. As soon as it's two rubber rubber Black Panthers banging against each other, it looks terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, the set score, the soundtrack is awesome. Mm-hmm. Great soundtrack. Mm. But then 
I was watching the movie and I was like, I don't know. I think Killmonger kind of earned it. Like, right? <laughs> like he followed all the rules and he beat the guy and he did it. And then it just people were like, but no, please. Blood. He's the one with the title. He's named after him. And I was like, but he's going to go yeah. unleash the stuff I mean, yeah, on the rest of I mean, yeah, he's a bad of... guy, but he's following your rules, and he mm. won, right? Like, <laughs> like, he's also way cooler and way more charismatic, so maybe yeah. I kind of want him. The CGI, I don't – like, it's not great, but also you, now that the stories are out and it's come out that they were under a time crunch, it's like that movie had another year. Mm. CGI probably would have been really good, yeah. but those are the weaker, the weaker parts of the movie – Definitely. They, that how does that happen well, for also, a movie that big? Yeah. I like, mean, they because they, they put it on a calendar, yeah. and there's so many moving pieces that they're like, well, it has to get done because then it comes out before Infinity War, and like it's, it's just— It's like uh, a traffic jam. One person hits yeah. the brake lights, and then everything slows yeah. down. Yeah. Which also, is what happened with Guardians 3. Black Panther wanted me to believe that Forrest Whitaker— looked like that in the 90s. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker has looked like Forrest Whitaker for the last 50 years. <laughs> you can't recast Forrest Whitaker as some young guy mm-hmm. and be like, this is how Forrest Whitaker looked in the 90s. Would you be no, happy with sorry. Grand Moff Tarkin uh, Whitaker? No, they just, okay. just put Forrest Whitaker. If they had just put Forrest Whitaker in there and had him stand on his knees or something, I'd be That's like, true. there he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just use footage from like Blown Away or, or, or some or other movie. Blood sport. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this hard cuts the footage of Force Whitaker from Crying Game. <laughs> it's like they, they sh- it looks like a scene from uh, the what is it, the last Star Wars movie, the Rise Skywalker, where it's like it's like I don't know about this Black Panther business. He's like, ah man, <laughs> I think th- uh, you can't be with her. <laughs> like, You're right. <laughs> Uh, James, you and Ryan again find yourselves at odds because you had Doctor Strange as one of your worst, and Ryan had it as one of his best. Uh, heresy! Why? For Doctor the same Strange reason. Awesome. As, for the same reason as Black Panther and Ant Man, I thought he was one of the worst parts of that movie. What? Also, he, he, what is his arc? He has no arc whatsoever. He hurt his hand, and then he got. Well, he's a surgeon well, who hurt his hand. Yeah, he's like, I can't do surgery anymore. I need to go get enlightened. So, so he goes <laughs> He goes to get wizard enlightenment with the hopes of fixing his hand, and it turns out that he's just naturally attuned to doing magic. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make – none of it – they just tell you everything. He's not naturally – he had to work hard to get a – How uh, did he break his hands? In a bad car wreck. Unnecessarily driving – like that whole scene is – you talk about – maybe you like it because it's a comedy. That whole scene <laughs> where he's driving his Lamborghini through, yeah. through the through the mountains of New York City or whatever, <laughs> taking turns at a thousand miles an hour, and his phone rings. He's like, "I should get this," and his pizza poppers are ready, and he opens it up. Like it is like one beat away from Naked Gun, and then he goes ah! and crashes, and he goes, "Not my hands," and then his hands shatter, yeah. and then it's it's like to me, it's like such a joke. The only the only redeeming thing about this whole movie for me was that. It was the opposite of Black Panther, where the visual effects were spectacular. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. But none of that mattered because the whole movie, though I thought the whole movie was a big joke. He was well, like, I vow never to kill, and then snaps that guy's neck <laughs> with, his, with, his, with his cape. He was like, now I'm never going to kill. Yeah. He, he, in that car wreck, uh, you know, he, it, it showed that his character, he's this selfish mm. uh, self-absorbed, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. impatient, yep. Yep. Egoman- narcissistic You're egomaniac. Right. I mean, I don't. Uh-huh. But what changes? Well, then he hurts his hands. And then he goes. <laughs> okay, all right. So he hurts his hands. I mean, I, and he can't it, do the I, thing I, that I, he's he good at. He spends all of his wealth to try and fix his hands. Yeah, right. selfish. Still a dick. Yeah, still a dick. Still selfish. And then when that doesn't work. He goes to Asia uh-huh. on a whim right? to get tan- transplant <laughs> to to learn magic, <laughs> oh. where yeah. he continues to be selfish mm. until the very end of the movie. <laughs> like, well, well yes, once he doesn't once, learn anything, they're once, like, no, he do, learned, do? He, don't read that book, don't touch that he, thing, and he's like, got it, reads book, I mean, touches he, thing. He learns at the end. I would say the argument is he makes the biggest sacrifice, which he sacrificed not only his time but his like his soul to Dharmamu or yeah. whatever, and gets an, he's in an infinite loop for. I don't know what ten thousand years or whatever. He does the yeah, ultimate the, selfless act. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. That's his arc, and it takes place in a montage it, at the very end of the movie. Right, but oh, it's an important, effective I'm montage. Saying, it's, it's I not, like that part. It's, you're looking at it's not an arc; it's a pyramid. <laughs> he shoots it's, to the top and saying, it yeah, falls no, it's down. Just, it's a straight line, and then it's the top point, uh-huh. and yes. then it's down again. Or but then the thing is, then Doctor Strange is great and everything else. Mm-hmm. I love him in all the other movies. Oh, I love yeah. when he shows I, up. He's super fun. Even his just throwaway scene with Thor. And Thor Ragnarok. I'm like, I'm like, 
This is fun. Mm -hmm. I like yeah, all this and, stuff. And Endgame, too, where it's like, oh, you know, he sees all the possibilities, and mm -hmm. he's got this weight on him. That was cool? Yeah. So was you cool. didn't like Well, in Endgame, he holds water. Oh. And he holds his finger up, and his hair's always moving. I retain a lot of water. I'm oh, sorry. In Infinity War is where he's like, he had that awesome fight with Thanos, right? Mm -hmm. And he has the same hair as Tony. Where he's like, I don't have the time stone. It's the sun. <laughs> 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 he goes, trick <"Trick>, yeah. <laughs> you. So, so you uh, just didn't like that his story arc. I think. The, I think was. The, I think the script is bad. I think the script is bad. Robert That's my biggest. Cargile. Um, I think the cast. It's one of those things. <laughs> I, I remember. No, I watched. I watched that movie, and when the credits rolled, I was like, "They should put all the visual effects people first, and the writer should be last." Because this script to me feels so lazy. I oh. thought it was fun. Man. I, I, they I, go down to the portals on the bottom. Starting to beef with Cargile. They they, <laughs> they they go down to the portals on the bottom, uh -huh. and they're like. <laughs> They're like, these are the most important portals. He's got a bomb! And it blows him into the next portal. And mm. I'm like, that's the way you figured out how to move this scene along. It's like the timing of this. They haven't committed any terrorist acts for the equivalent of like a year and a half. And mm. this, when they're taking him down to do this is now how you figured out. You someone someone came in and said, Hey, what's his name? Robert? Robert, Robert Cargill. Yeah. They go, hey, Robert. We got to go to the next scene. He's like, it doesn't make sense. And they're like, fuck yourself. It's got to go to the next <laughs> scene. And he's like, a bomb blows up into the next scene. I don't know. I, I think the script is bad. Everything else, I'm fine with. I am, I'm sad we won't get Mads Mikkelsen in anything else. Mads I'm, Mikkelsen's great. No, he's, I mean, he's great. Batch is great. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying like. like um, Tilda Swinton's great. Tilda Swinton's great. The fact that. He's a little white. I mean, maybe we'll get. <laughs> 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 what about Wong? Yeah, Wong. <laughs> he's great. I think Mordo's great. We saw All Wong, these people are great. Uh, we were trying to get breakfast in Austin and we saw Wong. <laughs> and he said. He's right. <laughs> Never mind. So, That's, like, what's that, it like working with your best friend Benedict? And he goes, "You're talking about me or yeah. my be my friend Benedict?" <laughs> That's Too many Benedicts on one set. <laughs> they said, but no, they'll never. They won't stop us. I was just gonna say that psychedelic uh, montage at the beginning was like the coolest thing I'd ever great. seen. That you know. When he's going through the whatever the when Tuttle Swinton, cooler than I don't know what he tunnel. Who's the tunnel Swinton? Squandering any good faith he had regained with Hollywood and Iron Man too. <laughs> General uh, uh, Massa Worm from Ain't It Cool News. He he wrote the script. It's sort of, no, of what? what? The script of what? Doctor Strange. Oh. He's just one of the the writers for that that, oh. that thing. And he's he one wrote. of the. He's the guy who creeped on all the girls at. The butt number different guy, different oh, guy. Gotcha. No, but uh, uh, also the fact that yeah, it has the best visual effects, and I thought the whole kind of I don't know what you call it, like Eastern mysticism, love it. You know, uh, aspect of the MCU that mm -hmm. Doctor Strange represents is a cool addition. The and, white guy, <laughs> yeah. uh, again, or some, the white woman. Sometimes, yeah. like like Doctor, so that's why I put Doctor Strange and Black Panther together. Uh -huh. Is because yeah, why? There's it's because there's. There's so many elements there that are are great and could have been amazing if it wasn't for one major aspect that just completely fell apart for me. Mm -hmm. In in Black Panther's case, it was th what they thought the main character, the titular character, was supposed to be in that movie, which yeah. is an accessory to everyone else. And in Doctor Strange, it's the laziness with which they c plotted out an actual story for the movie to take place. Well, James, it doesn't matter. Yes, you're I'll tell right. you all, it, it all doesn't matter because after almost 25 films at the box office, Stephen Lang, star of Avatar 2, uh -huh. says when Avatar 2 comes out in December of this year, it's going to break Every Avengers Endgame. Wait, is <laughs> he Stephen died? Lang in the Avatar? Of course two? he is. They brought him back. Yeah. yeah oh, is this article written back. by James Cameron? <laughs> Did he get a spear stabbed through his heart? He's yeah. The first one? Abby, you know, he's still there. Avatar okay. two um, <laughs> comes out December twelfth, and uh, wait, the movie's coming out when? December twelfth. This year? Um. Yeah. Uh, wow. No. Oh no, I'm sorry. Wait, did it get moved again? What yeah. is this article from? <laughs> <It's> from <laughs> where did you find this? So it was from times. three days ago. Stephen Lang posted oh, wait, never mind. Next on December, his band pardon camp. Me. Pardon me. I think it's, it's actually 2021. Yeah, it says right down there. 2021. 2021. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I read that wrong. No, I just I got excited. I was like, you're telling me I'm getting Dune and Avatar 2 in uh -huh. the same year? Impossible. Well, when asked if Avatar 2 could top Endgame at the box office with Venom in his voice, Stephen Lang said, I expect so. He's in Venom too. No, Venom in his voice. <laughs> he he thought he was going to be Cable, and he couldn't even do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't 
wouldn't that be sad if after all that Avatar 2 comes out 12 years after the first one and then like it's is like, it eh. possible it can't no. possibly we, they've already they, they used all their goodwill and tricked us once what do you mean what how Avatar. did they trick us they said oh the first time yeah they Avatar's said Avatar's fine no, I know, but no, it's not. It's fine. It's a fart. It's fine. It's an ugly. It's one of the one. Uh, this is a low qualification, but it's one of the best three D movies. One argue like, with you. It's like Avatar and Tintin, and then all Jackass three D. Jackass three D. Tron yes. Legacy. No, Tron Legacy. Tron Legacy is great in three D. No, it's dark. They didn't brighten the movie. <laughs> oh, you went to a bad theater. It's Guys, dark. You're gonna you, have did to you get subtitles this. for the Dark Elves? You're going to have to take this into the other room because <laughs> we've got to wrap this up, unfortunately. This was a fun one. Thank you for Hold sharing. Hold on, Ryan has one more point. I was just, it's, I've seen this article uh, around like uh, that he says this, but really uh-huh. he just, somebody asks him the question, I know, right? I and know, that's goes, why I thought it was fine. I expect so. Yeah, his answer is very non-combative. <laughs> like, that's that's why I like, Stephen oh, Lang yeah, predicts yeah. Yeah. I thought Avatar I set that up by saying he had venom in his everyone. How is he in the second Thank you guys for sharing your Marvel best and worst. That was fun. That was and, fun. Uh, we'll see you guys. I'm right. Y'all are wrong, but that was still, I, I'm glad that we came to this. We'll uh, see uh, guys next Let her week. end. <laughs> At least now I understand where Ryan's coming from. When I saw his list, I was like, what is wrong? With this boy? I don't. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See you next week on Film House. I'm going to go watch Deadpool. <laughs>